Welcome back to the News at 10. It's time for Sports News with Charles Aruka. Welcome to Sports News. The Confederation of African Footballers shortlisted five players for the CAF African Player of the Year. The top five were today unveiled after votes from the members of the CAF Media Committee, CAF Technical and Development Committee, and half of the 20 member panel of experts. The list includes current holder Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, Algeria's duo of Riyad Mahrez and Islam Slimani, Senegal's Sadio Mane, and Egypt's Mohamed Salah. And in the UEFA Champions League, Russian side CSKA Moscow forced Bayer Leverkusen to a one-all draw at the 20,000 capacity Moscow Arena. Tottenham Hotspur's miserable run in the competition continued as they lost 2-1 to Monaco in France. Borussia Dortmund beat Polish side Legia Warsaw 8-4 in a high-scoring game which saw Marco Reus score a hat-trick for the Germans. While Real Madrid ended sporting Lisbon's hopes of progression with a 2-1 away victory against Cristiano Ronaldo's boyhood club, Leicester City secured passage to the next round with a 2-1 victory over Club Bruges of Belgium, while FC Copenhagen and Portuguese giants FC Porto had to settle for a draw. Elsewhere, French side Lyon defeated Dinamo Zagreb, while Italian champions Juventus came from a goal down to defeat Sevilla 3-1. Our oh, Bruce Arena has been handed the tall order of getting the United States qualifying campaign for the 2018 World Cup back on track after being named head coach of the national team. Arena, a five-time Major League Soccer champion coach who is taking over from the recently fired Jurgen Klinsmann, is no stranger to the U.S. national team, having been at the helm from 1998 to 2006. And in boxing, Manny Pacquiao says he feels like a young man in his 20s and would relish another crack at Floyd Mayweather Jr. The 37-year-old ended a brief retirement to leave Jesse Vargas of the WBO welterweight title earlier this month. And he says he is in great shape to avenge last year's defeat. That's the final bell on sports news and it's back to Gimba with the rest of the news at 10. The United Nations has described the situation in the besieged enclave of eastern Aleppo as horrendous following a week of renewed and fierce bombardment on the rebel-held part of the city where the United Nations estimates between 250,000 and 275,000 citizens are trapped. The assault began last Tuesday after a week-long pause in airstrikes and shelling inside East Aleppo. At least 141 civilians were killed, including 18 children. That's according to the Syrian Observatory of Human Rights. The eastern part of the city's hospitals were also devastated. The spokeswoman of the U.S. President-elect, Kellyanne Conway, says that Mr. Donald Trump will not pursue a further investigation to Hillary Clinton's emails. For those expecting him to appoint a special prosecutor to look into the former Secretary of State's email, his uh, advisor said that Mr. Trump will do no such thing as he intends to help her heal. Later, Mr. Trump said a fresh inquiry was not off the table, though, but he didn't want to hurt the Clintons. Mr. Trump had threatened during his campaign to jail Ms. Clinton, and at rallies his supporters often chanted, lock her up. The FBI has cleared Ms. Clinton, but criticized her private email server. And finally, tonight, in celebration of the rich cultural heritage of Yoruba people, Nigeria's tallest statue, the Moremi statue, standing 42 feet, has been unveiled by the Oni of Ife Oba Adiei Ogunsi at Ilefe Ocean State. At the ceremony, the Ife monarch explained that the Moremi statue was done using 100% made in Nigeria products and the sculpturing done by native youths there. He asked everyone to work steadfastly to ensure the return of cultural appreciation and local content development.
beautiful statue indeed. And the main news again. The Supreme Court today declared the appeal court to resume hearing in all appeals relating to the governorship candidacy dispute in the People's Democratic Party in Ondo State. Also today, the chairman of the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, Mr. John Momo, advocated a constitutional amendment transferring the power to collect radio and television licenses revenue from local government councils to the National Broadcasting Commission. And U.S. President-elect Donald Trump today discarded his plan to investigate Hillary Clinton's emails. And that's all been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for being a part of it. On behalf of everyone here, have a splendid night, friends. Good night. This is Channel's Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting.